Oh, I'm trying to bump up here, eh? so that'll be interesting. Fuck me, I don't know if it's going to work. Joining me yet again on another long ride. I mean, I've done short rides, long rides. So anyway, so we're on a long ride, and uh, yeah, it's Bank Holiday Monday in August 2024. So uh, I'm going to hopefully not regret taking on board this challenge today of riding over 100 miles. On a bike that's well, it's not quite a hundred years old yet, but it's getting there. Yeah, 90 years old. Um, yeah, so I'm off to Glastonbury Tour if I can find it. If we get there, if not, we'll. Uh, well, the video will have to be slightly different, won't it? Um, yeah, because. Um, I've still got no sat nav on this bike whatsoever. So my ability to get to Glastonbury Tour is going to be based on having looked at uh, uh, you know uh, the map on my phone and going, yeah, that's a good little ride out. So uh, we'll see what happens. But if I get there, then obviously we'll have a look. Um, points of engagement, anything you like. Um, hopefully, I'd say hopefully some of you are quite loyal followers to the content I create. Uh, I always feel it's not a worthwhile occupation. I state that quite often. That's based on the uh, lack of interest in old Velocex and uh, such moto vlogging content as to which I create. So anyway. Um, yeah, I think there's a couple of things we will discuss. One's going to be Glass and Tour, uh, as that's where we're going. And the other will be the Isle of Man TT 2025. Yeah, so there's a couple of things we'll discuss. And uh, this Glastonbury Tour, I believe, in Summer of Sat. I quite like Summer of Sat, although I'm mostly uh, sort of a Hampshire Dorset boy. But yeah, but uh, Somerset's a, it's a nice place. Obviously it's got glass and free. Um, but yeah, it's a nice place. Just check if I'm in neutral here. No, I'm in first, okay. That's alright, it's not ideal. I'd rather be a neutral, but I just don't want to risk the. I don't really want to risk the clutch issues. Now, hopefully, you'll see on the camera my abortion with this uh, bubble wrap that's uh, trapped underneath the filler cap for the fuel tank. That is because. I am trying to get all the way to Glastonbury Tour and back on one tank of fuel. Now it's about it's going to be about 115 miles, I think, for me today. If I don't get lost, then that's not fucking guaranteed. So, can I make it on one tank of fuel? Well, if you've watched some of my other long rides, I mean, the other longest ride was probably, to, what was it, uh, Bear Regis, no, Lime Regis, sorry. Line reading. Yeah, so that was over 100 miles, and I'm pretty sure I did that on the one tank of fuel. But the thing is, obviously, when I'm going for such a big 
uh, attempt at distance, mileage, fuel, whatever. I've got the issue of uh, I've got to fill a filler right up, um, and then that means that it does tend to overflow a little bit. Um, so yeah, so it'll just sort of like give me a few issues. So I thought, all right, why not try what I've done? Which is just, you know, some sort of way of sealing the seal that's obviously fucked in the uh, filler cap. Uh, uh, I don't think it's worked. I can see a little bit of seepage, so uh, which is just there. So it's either helping, but obviously not a 100% cure, fix, whatever, or it's done fuck all. So when we get to Blasphemy Tour, if I make it, I'll take that thing off and uh, I just want to check obviously how much fuel I've got. But I mean, obviously, if I've got to stop at a fuel station, that's fine. But what I'm currently running on, fuel-wise, is some race fuel, which I might have mentioned on some of the other videos, and I can't remember if I have or haven't. So some race fuel that I bought, which has got no ethanol in it whatsoever. It's reasonably high octane, but it's just really purely made. Um, it's from Anglo-American Oil Company. Uh, good stuff, very expensive. You're talking about five pound a litre, I think. Certainly 450 to five pound a litre. So expensive we will start with the TT because I think with the glass and tour combo it'd be better to do it when I'm closer to the tour and then if we actually get to see the tour on camera as I'm talking about it it might fruit up the emotions so anyway let's do TT right who of you who are watching this video has been to the Isle of Man TT been to the Isle of Man TT Let's start up some conversations. Because basically I am going there <coughs> next year. Uh, now I've only booked, so again, like if you, if you know about all this stuff, you can you can highlight comments that, that correct me or help me out, whatever. So yeah, so I've provisionally booked the ferry crossing, which cost me around about £80. And uh then at a later date I can't remember when they're going to hit me for about another £200 so we're currently looking somewhere around 280 to do the crossings on a motorcycle to the Isle of Man I'm experiencing something new I've never ever ever been to the Isle of Man so yeah we've got this group of people going on uh, you know what we tried to book our bookings about the same weekend that the current this year Isle of Man TT concluded its final races and the fucking ferries were fully booked you know like I couldn't believe it I was like we're going basically we're booking a year in advance right and they're already sold out so we couldn't all get the same crossing Hello, mate. we couldn't all get the same time to cross so uh Two guys are going up in a van, taking two bikes in the van, and they're going nearly a week before what I am. Then you've got me and one other chap that I've never met before that are supposedly crossing at the same time on the same day. But the crossing is at two in the morning. I can't remember if it's ten past two or half past two, but it's two a.m. something. And that's pretty fucking brutal because I've got to ride up there during the day and I'll probably want to leave plenty of time so I'll probably be leaving way early and arriving way early uh, sitting around for ages then getting across in then it's like how oh fuck me I've seen a little bit of rain here that is not planned on the old road anyway um, yeah then I've got to get across to the island obviously it takes however long I won't sleep during that crossing at all uh, and then I've got to try and pitch a tent so that's all a bit like not ideal in my opinion but anyway that's that's what it is so so anyone like i said that's obviously been to the tt that's going to get involved with me on this video what i'm curious about is obviously how did you get there mode of transport and all that because my current issue is the fact that uh i'm not going on this bike sadly not going to go on the ktt uh 
I just, I don't know, I'd love to do it, but I feel like there's a number of issues with that. So anyway, I'm going to go on a modern bike, but I don't have a way of sat nav, you know, a way of direct. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a tank bag on the tank, which has got a clear pocket in the top, and I will write on a piece of paper all these sort of crucial points at which I need to, you know, take exits and all that shit. Ah, uh, but I've done that in the past. Oh gosh, I got lost, so it's very easy to take one wrong turn and then, you know, you're, you're kind of fucked, really. Now I'm going to go straight on Bristol Bar A36, I think. Uh, no, I'm not. I'm going to go left. It says long leap, so I'm going to go left. Fuck it. Go left. Centre park's long leap. Yeah, this could be... Yeah, this could be right, I think. So, happy days. I said again. <laughs> the old no sat now. But it makes for a funner journey, unless you've got time restraints, which I might have on the way out because bloody bank on this traffic. Anyway, uh, yeah, so, like I said, directions are going to be a fucking right nightmare getting up there. And I just think that's going to stress me out. I, you might have flown there somehow. There might be a way to fly to the Isle of Man, I presume. So, you know, tell me about your different transport methods to get to the Isle of Man. If, like I said, if you've ever done it. Um, and then tell me if you've been there for a TT or if you've been there for the Manx. In the future, after I've done the TT once, it opens up the option to go and do the Manx. Like I said, I, don't, I just don't want to kind of have the Manx as my first experience of the Isle of Man. Yeah, I've gone from Gordon Bridge to Glastonbury Tour, and then you guys join me somewhere out past Oldsbury. And then obviously, yeah, off, I like you saw the sides for Warminster, I think there's Frome, uh, Shepton Mallet, it's that kind of situation that I'm trying to deal with. Yeah, I think I'm looking forward to um, going into the paddocks, like if that's not 100% um, Davy Todd, I would like to meet Davy Todd. Um, he's such a fun looking sort of guy, you know, like he's got that character that, you know, used to be like your sort of Guy Martin, you know, like, come on mate, give me a bit of fucking room you can, that's it. If you have any recommendations or requests regarding me creating content during my time on the island, again, let me know. Alright, let's move on to Glastonbury Tour now. Hey, it's, it's meant to hold quite a, uh, an amount of energy, sacred energy. It's meant to be, you know, I kind of, I kind of believe there's got to be something going on with that. You know, there's got to be something to it because, you know, that was obviously built some time ago right but you know who the fuck would like bother who would bother to spend that amount of time to build not 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 the not the tour not the yeah why would why would the ancients build such a big hill you know they normally picked uh you could call it religious but whatever they normally picked a site to build on that was sacred and had certain energies as all Oh shit, yeah, I'm actually turning, I'm turning right here as well. Nearly fucking missed that turning. Fucking hell. Um, but I don't have that, I've always felt like I don't have that ability to sense things and feel things that aren't obviously, you know, using the normal senses that we have, if you like. Um, so yeah, um, so I've been to Glastonbury Tour and I've got to say, like I said, I didn't feel anything. I didn't feel any um, mystical, magical feeling, whatever. I don't know how to explain it really, but I didn't feel that kind of stuff that's going on. Have you felt on Glastonbury Tour any uh, mystical energy? You know, I'm just, just curious, you know, like I said, like... I'm not sceptical of it at all. Um, uh, I envy anyone that, like I said, can obviously feel that. Pilton, guys, we're into Pilton. Um, yeah, like I said, I envy anyone that can... That can by, oh, by the way, Pilton, i got a feeling that the first ever Glastonbury Festival, the music festival that's again, I've got a feeling possibly the first one 
that happened was in Pilton. I got, got this feeling, and obviously I could be completely wrong, but it's still worth a mention. But because Glastonbury is like a, uh, a pilgrimage destination, which, you know, speaking of pilgrimages, I was, I've been over in Spain, like, and there's something over there, it might be called Santiago de, de Domingo or something, or something like that. There's something like Costa or Casta Domingo, Santiago, I can't remember, but there's some walk that people do as a pilgrimage, and they walk for bloody miles and miles and miles. It's a long old walk. And the end destination is a church, and I think it's in Santiago, Santiago something like that. Anyway, I think it's kind of northern Spain, and I don't know where the start point of the walk is. Anyway, so they do a pilgrimage, and that creates a... Uh, a special feeling upon arrival, you know, the, the, the pilgrimage is uh, uh, a good thing. And I feel like me riding this bike to Glastonbury Tour is a pilgrimage. I feel that, you know, it's not just taking a car, it's not just taking a modern motorcycle. This is taking a classic vehicle that is not that easy to ride in amongst modern day vehicle traffic. And uh, yeah, so I personally feel I'm on a I'm on a pilgrimage myself. And when I reach the destination, I will be relieved to reach the destination, as or whether I don't know what, whether it's relief, but yeah, as you know, as a pilgrim does when he or she reaches her destination of the pilgrimage. You know, it's it's an achievement, and I think it's quite a lovely thing. Oh fuck me, I can see a lot of people up there on the tour a lot of people and it always amazes me actually how many people you see up but I'll tell you one thing the people that come to Glastonbury Tour the, the, the tourists the, uh, the pilgrims they are not going to be happy with the noise of my motorcycle because the, the gentle folk that are spiritually interested you know people well, I'm just going to go this way because I'm not quite sure so yeah, they're going to think, what the fuck is this guy doing with something that loud and noisy? Uh, but it's just it is what it is, isn't it? <laughs> Where's it from? 
Uh, 34. I was going to say mid-30s, yeah. 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 I suppose valve springs. Good Lord. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, up here anyway. So. Just about. <laughs> Just stopped in Shillingston, taking a little break here. <clears throat> My hands were really hurting. Um, and the clutch wanted a little bit more adjustment. So I'll try and spin this camera around, see a little bit of where I am. But um, yeah, just hoping that you enjoyed the views at Glastonbury Tour. So anyway, it's a little bit of a around there. So what have you guys enjoyed of the ride so far? Did you like seeing Glastonbury Tour? Do you think it's a bit too far to go on a Velocet KTC uh, from 1934? Or do you think actually it's uh, good to see motorcycles of this era still being used today? If you're watching this video because you own a Velocet or have over the Bella set in the past, I would be interested to know at what point in your life did you buy your first Bella set? Um, that was fucking sketchy. I hate coming up over the brow here and that. Um, yeah, at what point did you buy your first Bella set? Why did you buy it? You know, all that backstory. Um, ah, now we've got a bit of a bit of a fucking backlog here, aren't we? Look at all these cars. Just got up another motorcyclist. I think they went past me and I was on the side of the road. <coughs> Tinkering with the clutch. Oh, the weather's glorious today. I mean, we're looking at about 20 degrees, but that's just right for me. Riding motorcycles with the gear on, 20 degrees, just about right. I think it's very picturesque, very, uh, very good for my soul seeing these trees. Trees down each side of the road. And like I said, even to my left you see there'll be a Babri Rings uh, site of historic interest. 